<laughs> it's springtime. Oh man. Ooh. I don't think I wintered over very well. <laughs> I'm just like so glad spring is here. Okay, so we just filmed the other day setting up a catch box nursery. Now we've been setting the actual catch boxes out. So this is going to be rather short short video, kind of a follow follow up video. Okay, so the date uh, March 20th 2022, 6.35 in the evening. Not messing with bees, just setting up catch boxes. Pretty boxes, all five frame nukes in pairs. We're working on some other catch boxes we can set in the middle or whatever. So none of these boxes here are gonna be permanent. You get to watch my shadow. Didn't wanna film like in the sun, setting sun. So you're facing kind of east, you know? Sun setting to our back. The camera focus on that. Camera focus. Ooh, yeah. Swarm Commander. Where is it going to focus? Oh, yeah. Hope that focuses. The ticket. That's the ticket. Nozanoff pheromone. Yep. Remember, if you watch the other lesson, be speaking two different modes or methods, vibrations and pheromones. So our principle is we're going to call down some bees. Over the months, bees are a natural resource, just like a water well, oil well, gas well, but they're above our heads, not beneath our feet. So we're going to call in some bees. So without being too detailed, Five frame box, starter strip frame, starter starter, two frames of comb. Okay, so that's whether it's a ribbon of wax or a starter strip, I like to set it up that way. It'd be three frames that are starter frames and two frames that are comb. All spray was Zentari earlier today for protection against wax moth damage. That's super, super important. Very, very important. And Swarm Commander is very strong. I, I wouldn't want to, you know, I can smell it from here. Bees smell exceptionally well, even better than dogs. See, there's a bee. I just saw a bee zip by. It didn't take them long. Once they smell it, the prevailing wind will carry it, you know. So, the instructions on the bottle, I believe. One good spray on the lid, two sprays on the porch, Ah, didn't come out the first couple of times. Okay, so there's one spray. And what that does is it pulls the bees up. It pulls them up to that spot. To that. Don't, you don't always assume that bees will go onto the frames like you think they should. In this kind of setup, they got no other room but to go on the frames. And some of the strategies, you have an empty box, frames up top, and they build off of the bottom of those frames. So don't just assume I like this type of strategy because the boxes are smaller, they're easier for me to handle. It's less likely that they're gonna build cross comb if you have the big 10 frame box, if you're using that strategy. Sometimes the bees will build perpendicular comb to the frames. It's instinctive to them, it's tougher, it's stronger, it's why they do it. But in these little five frame nukes, the shape is rectangular, so it's, it works against them and for me, if that makes sense. They're less likely to put in horizontal comb. Two squirts. Oh, that was good. Very good. I'll put my brick on here in a minute. All right. One squirt. Ah, strong squirt. Sometimes, sometimes that little pumper doesn't pump out the first time. Two squirts on the porch. Ooh, what is that? Ah, come on. There it is. Whoo, man. Whoo. When I first started using Swarm Commander, I smelled my fingers. Ooh, that kind of burned my sinuses. It is very strong. A brick, doesn't matter. Just some weight. Keep the wind from, because the, 
boxes don't have any honey or bees. They're pretty light. And if you don't have some kind of weight, they're off like a saucer, yeah? Okay, next group. Let's see. I'm gonna, eh, I could go really fast, but I, I want you to have good lessons, you know? Whoa, we're after good lessons. That's what we want. So if you watched us setting up the apiary, see I gave you lessons while we were setting. Hope you, hope you caught that, you know. Everything's, it's just like Mother Nature threw a switch and everything's just exploded green. Just boom. Wow, I can just smell some of the nectar on the on the air. Woo wow. Yeah. What do we got here? Okay. It's important that you push the frames together. Make sure that the frames are pushed together. You gain back your bee space in the middle. Any gap that's over three-eighths of an inch, and they'll pull down a sheet of wax, and you'll have to tear it out because it's all messed up. It's not where it's supposed to be. Just saying, it's up to you as a beekeeper to uh, get back your bee space. Who did it bow? No way. Ooh, that's pretty tight. Ooh, huh? Come on. What are we doing here? Get over. <laughs> no. There you go. <laughs> Two squirts on the porch. Or the opening. This box is a bit different. My kind of, my gut feel is we're right on the verge of swarms moving. Maybe they might already be moving, I don't know. <laughs> that was good. All right, next one. And I'll come out, try to come out and refresh these. Oh, not every two weeks, something like that. One good squirt. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Rolled up in my nose. Oh, dang. Wow, man, wow, wow. Don't, don't want to overdo. It will repel the bees if it's too strong. Okay. Okay, let's, uh, okay. One. Gosh, dang, that wasn't like five or six, it wasn't coming out. Okay, lesson. <laughs> Holy cow, let's see if I can, uh, let's see where I'm. I'm gonna give you something to watch for, okay? <sighs> yeah, something to watch for. Okay, so let me uh, move you up. This is a good lesson. We could do this really fast, but I like the lessons in it. Ah, very good. Yeah, very good. Okay, so you do your walk around, and uh, you need to stay, really, if you can, on your catch boxes. You need to stay 30 or 40 yards away. Uh, think of bees, scout bees, checking out a box. Think of them like little white-tailed deer. They're really jumpy, really flighty. And if you approach and you don't know what you're approaching, they just kind of woo, kind of fade away. And they have flat rejected your offer. They go, nope, that's not private enough. So you need to respect scout bees will be floating and dancing all around. All four sides, top and looking at the bottom. They're very critical. They're looking. There'll be all four sides. Now this may go on for two three four days a week and it may go quiet and then two about two days later maybe a day later boom here they come boom there seems to be this lull this pausing point you'll have lots of 
you come out like one o'clock in the afternoon, whatever, and you are looking and you go, oh man. And the next day you look and you go, oh, there's more. Yep. And what's happening is they're going back home and getting their sisters over some days. Hey, come look at this. Come look at this. And they're building up a consensus. They're building up this consensus. Hey, hey, hey now this is pretty cool. As long as you don't come walking up and bust them, that's your fault. That's a beekeeper's fault. That's a low BIQ. Well, you don't understand what you're doing yet. So boom, and they bust, and you wait again. Now you're waiting another three or four weeks. You go, oh, well, don't be coming and opening up the box and checking and seeing. You need to leave them alone. Read this. Out here is what you're critical of, not what's in the box. That comes later. Out here, you want them to accept what they're analyzing out here. Once they house up and come in here, this attention to these sides and back is ignored. They have accepted their house. They, can, they ignore this. And now they're protecting their opening and their porch and you see purposeful travel. And when I see that, when I see that, I won't open up yet, I'll come and stand. I'll stand and I will try to watch them bring in pollen. Pollen. I'm looking for pollen. Pollen is protein to feed eggs and larvae. Well, if there's eggs and larvae, there's a queen with them. I need to let her lay up some eggs. It takes 21 days for a worker to hatch. That's three weeks. Slow down. Just slow your mind down. You get in there too quick and you want to look. Busted. Out they go. <laughs> you, they've not committed to the house just because they're in there that doesn't mean they're committed they need to lay up some eggs and larvae and now they're committed bees have a sense of priority it's always brood first then a queen and then honey that's a principle it's not changing and they didn't ask you brood first then a queen then honey that's their level of sensitivity they're brood sensitive first so i need to let them house up a bunch of brood, that's going to take at least a couple of weeks. Then I can come back a couple of weeks later, smoke them, and have a gentle peak. Not going to be messing around, just a gentle peak. Once I see the pollen coming in, I'll have my magic marker, and I'll just write on the back of the box. I may you know, a little abbreviations, eyeball, PL, whatever, and then my date. And I'll give them two weeks, at least two weeks from that date before I really mess with them. So once I've confirmed they've housed up, I may even give them a month solid in that box. And then I can strap them, smoke them, smoke them, strap them, plug them, and take them up north or let them be sold off, whatever I'm doing. But the, one of the biggest mistakes that new beekeepers make yeah, they, they quickly understand catch boxes. Ooh, we can do that. Great. They get their lure. Boy, they do that. Great. And here are some bees around, and they're so excited. And here comes a beekeeper. He wants to look. And two, they're gone. Because they don't understand. Just because you have bees around here, they've not committed to a house. They're looking at it. They're looking at it. That's why you see bees on all these sides kind of floating around. They're thinking about it. They hadn't made a decision yet. They're thinking about it. And you as a beekeeper who doesn't understand yet, you'll ruin, you'll ruin it, and you need to stay 30, 40 yards. Yeah, I, I like to take a pair of binoculars, and I'll, I got enough room that I can get 30, 40 yards away and watch them. Now check this out, watch this. You're facing east, facing east. Check it out, this is a tip. If I come over here, way, I could get way over there. With my binoculars, I'm facing west with that low west setting sun. And, it, and, and when that sun hits their wings, they glow. It's crazy cool. You can stand back 40 yards with your binoculars facing west with a low setting sun and the bee wings glow. You'll see bees you, you didn't even know were there. And it's just like, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> I love 
using binoculars at this time of day when the sun is just at the treetops and be on that far side looking this way and I can see who's interested in these catch boxes. So I don't even have to walk down the aisle. I can just stay way over by the fence and kind of pace that fence to get an angle and use my binoculars and look at each one. I don't have to come up to them. Nah, I'm not going to ruin it. I'm going to stay away with my binoculars using the sun and I can see any colony or box that's getting checked out or one that has already been taken because the light will be bouncing off their wings. Oh, very cool. When you do this, you'll go, oh my God, that's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, I told you. <laughs> it's very, very cool. All right, here we go. Don't bust it for yourself. Yeah, we're working our way, working our way down. Pairs, how many? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Ah, ten will do. I want more than that. But ten, yeah, that's a good start. You know, we were out here yesterday setting all this up. Looking, yep. Okay, now my bottle is like about empty. I got another one. Always keep extra. This is very, very important. <laughs> always, always keep extra. Ah. <laughs> it's just not coming out well. Not coming out well. All right. <clears throat> See if I can hold it level. Ooh boy. Let's see. What in the world is like leaking? Woo! Not coming out very well. There's one. Man, boy, it's and when you go inside you really have to wash your hands really good. Okay, that's a good squirt. Yeah, nice. Nice. Don't want that lid blowing off, you know. <laughs> it's almost empty, man. Woo! Just wipe that excess. Yeah, so don't ever forget first you want to see what scout bees are checking you out. Yeah, that's real important. Stay away. Stay away. Yeah. Sometimes the girls make really fast decisions. I've set catch boxes out of an early day and by evening they're full. Crazy. Sometimes set them out in the afternoon, come back out the next, oh, Early afternoon, already full. Like, dang, I didn't even see him come in, man. Hope you like the way we teach. I don't know, everybody teaches different, I guess. If it doesn't make sense in my mind, I don't do it. A lot, of, a lot of traditional beekeeping stuff that uh -uh. I could tell you, <laughs> I could tell you why, but that's another, that's another lesson. <laughs> okay, okay, see if I can, I want to maximize this bottle here. I'm about done with it. Oh. <laughs> that's on the last leg there. <laughs> Oh man, so all the nuke boxes are set up as far as frames the same way. Three tab frames, two frames with some kind of comb that they can get up on. All spray with Zentari, that's very important. Ah, come on. Not really a spray, huh? Damn. All right. Boy, ooh, oily. Man, live. Wow, new bottle, here we go. <laughs> oh 
prevailing wind right now is from the south. So, boy, it'll go a long ways. I see bees going over my head. They'll find it, man. They will for sure. They sure will. Okay. That's it. <laughs> Boy. Yeah, man. I'm telling you. Now these lids are not really proper fit on this. There's a gap up there. So if they house up in here, before I move them, I gotta switch these lids with a proper lid. I'll just switch it with one that fits proper. I just ran out of lids. Okay, here we go. Sundown. Like 6.45 or 6.50 right now. One good squirt. Ah, ah, there we go. Okay. You know, just make sure a good squirt comes out. If not, just do it again. Okay. Uh, Swarm Commander, people, <laughs> they say, what? Well, that's kind of expensive. I said, really? Depending on what? <laughs> like, how many colonies do you want? I mean, <laughs> well, well, as soon as you catch a colony, it's paid for itself. <laughs> and you still have all this left, man. No, like 38 or 40 dollars after shipping or something. Okay, two squirts. Oh, that's good. Yeah, good pump, good squirt. Holy moly. Whew, man. Wow. So what I would do, let's see. Let's see if I can do this. Yeah. Okay, so check this out. All right, so you know there's two lines of hive stands. Right, okay, so so now here, here's what I would do. I'll show you exactly what I do. It's gonna seem, because we're filming, it's gonna seem like you're so far away. Nah, not really. About 40 yards, I don't know, 50 maybe. I get over here. We have paths, we've always mowed paths on the property. So it's easy walking. But we're tight now, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so you ought to be able to see me. So I would, I would come straight down from the house this time of night with the sun just at the top of the trees. And I could have my binoculars. I could get where I want to see the porches and look and go, oh, no, nothing there. Well, I can see even way behind you, I can see with binoculars really good. And I come down here, you ought to be able to see me. And I'd look down the line. And what I'm doing, not only looking for bees, but what kind of flight attitude. Now, now this takes some years to do this. You gotta stay in beekeeping more than two or three years. Always a window of five to eight seems to be the key time frame. And after those years in beekeeping, you'll, you'll get good just like this. And you'll be able, you'll be able to look and you'll see, well, this is how I describe it, a, an activity out, out here. And sometimes it may be further out, but what is happening right here? Now, now if it's over here, those are scout bees looking and analyzing. But once they really own the house, this is the only panel or side they're interested in. So, so, so then I, I analyze this, but we're just starting out with catch boxes. So I'm sensitive to all of this and they will dash in, they will dash in. They're kind of, they're kind of nervous to dash. Boom, dash in, check it out, off they go. They always are out here first, first. And then they gotta get brave. They don't know what's inside of them. And they go check it out and look and sniff and smell and measure. And, boom back home that seems to be a pattern a pattern so just know you in, in catch box strategy you should be sensitive here just just it's just about this zone this zone do not walk up to them <laughs> not until you've confirmed 
that they're just coming in and off the porch and they've ignored these three sides. If that's the case, I'll come up here and stand and watch for pollen to come in. Look, pollen, it was a suit on, you know. Pollen, oh, pollen. My magic marker out, I write the date, an eyeball, maybe PL or whatever for pollen, and off I go. I ain't open them, I ain't touching them. I'll leave them two weeks before I open them. Follow that pattern, all right? Follow that pattern. All right, let's go back, back, back. I'm, th I'm thinking. <laughs> All right, turn around. There's a box up there. Ooh, kind of fast. Two more. And that's it for the night. Uh, yeah, come on. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, sorry. I'm going to skip by the motor here. Get out of the sun. Well, I hope this is good for you. I hope you're learning. I had to get this done. Sunday, it's supposed to be bad storms for tomorrow, which this is supposed to be tomorrow's chores today. Okay. Last two. Ooh, that was a good squirt. Oh, bummer. <laughs> and then, excuse me, and then two on the porch. <laughs> now, of course, rain's coming in. So what's that going to do the porch? Oh, it probably washed some of it off. So, oh, Whew, gosh dang. Whew, whew, whew. Oh, oh, oh. That burnt. Oh. 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 Don't do as I do, do as I tell you to do. <laughs> oh, dead gummit. Oh, excuse me. That's how bad that hurts, man. God dang. <coughs> okay, quick little lesson. <coughs> uh, <coughs> oh, I gotta go now. I gotta get my hands washed. Alright, there you go. Now, now we wait. That's it. I mean, how hard is that? <laughs> That's not like, you gotta get the width. There's 10. I want probably eight more out here. And this would be a catch box nursery. And we'll keep working it as long as the bees wanna move. Oh, we'll go all the way to August, something like that. All right, that's a quickie. <coughs> oh my. <coughs> Golly day. If you like what we do, Please click like and subscribe, hit the notifications button so you get new videos coming at you and lessons if you really, really want to learn from us. Go look at the Personal Advisor Program. That's our ongoing coaching service. You can become a member there, subscribe. It's only $29.95 and look at all that you get. Yeah, packed, loaded, chock full of good teaching strategies. <coughs> Do not breathe in, Swarm Commander. <laughs> God dang it. I'll check you later. I gotta go back to the house, man.